Okay, so we've got a fun problem here where we're raising this entire fraction to different powers. We're going to square it, raise it to the first power, to the zero power, negative one, and then the negative two power. So how do we do this? Um, well, let's start, I think, with the easiest case, the zero power. As complicated as this looks, we remember that, I hope, I think, that anything to the zero power is equal to one. And if you're not convinced of this, just remember that really this is based on a simple pattern. For example, if we take 2 to the third, that equals 8, right? 2 times 2 times 2. If we square 2, we get 4. If we raise 2 to the first power, we get 2. Notice every time we lower our power here by 1, we're having, right? 8 divided by 2 is 4 divided by 2 is 2. So what would 2 to the 0 be? Would it make sense if it was 0? Would it fit this pattern? No, right? We divide 2 by 2 to follow the pattern and get 1. And, and this will really work pretty much for any number, except for when x is equal to 0. And that's a whole separate conversation. But, but here, if x is not 0, if our base is not 0, we have some other base, it, to the 0 power will be 1. And we can even continue this pattern to think about negative exponents, right? Next we'll have one half, right, divide one by two, so two to the negative one is really one half, and two to the negative two is one fourth, and so forth. Um, here, we'll just keep halving, and it will kind of lead us, this will help us with our negative exponents here. There's an idea that with negative exponents, like, let's say two to the one is, is really just two. Well, two is equal to two over one. Flip it over, and we get one over two. In other words, 2 to the 1 and 2 to the negative 1 are reciprocals. They're flipped. And the same is true for 2 squared, which is 4, or 4 over 1, right? And 2 to the negative 2, which is 1 over 4. So there's this idea that when you use a negative exponent, you're, you're essentially flipping everything in your, in your fraction. So, okay, let's move forward. We've got this to the 0 power equals 1, right? Assuming that, that a and y are not equal to 0. And we don't know that, but we can, we can say that if a and y equal to 0, it's a different case. But if a and y um, are not 0, then this is certainly equal to 1 when the power is 0. We have the first power, right? Raise something to the first power. What's going to happen? Again, we're going to avoid the conversation around 0 here. But assuming that this is not equal to 0, uh, if this is raised to the first power, it is just itself. So this would equal negative 3 times a to the third over 1 half y squared. But you probably don't want to leave this fraction down here in your denominator. So a nice way to get rid of that fraction is to multiply by the reciprocal. If you remember, multiplying a number by a reciprocal essentially cancels it out. Because what you'll be doing, right, Multiply 1 half by 2, you're doubling a half, and that's just 1. And 1 will not affect your answer at all when you're multiplying or dividing. So that'll cancel out. But you can't just get rid of the number and change it. If you're going to multiply your denominator by 2, you should also multiply your numerator by 2. And this will actually help us solve for all the other exponents as well, getting that fraction out of that denominator. Okay, so I distribute our 2 up here, and we get negative 6, a to the third, over y squared. Now our problem is a lot easier to deal with. So, so anyway, if we're raising it to the 0 power, it equals 1. If we raise it to the 1 power, it equals itself, which is can be rewritten here as negative 6 times a to the third over y squared. What about if we square it? What's going to happen? Well, there's a law of exponents, right, where if we, I'm going to draw an arrow here because we're changing our value now. If we square this, what do we do? Well, essentially, we square every piece of our fraction. So negative 6 squared becomes 36. And I'm running out of room, but I'll clear some of this off. Okay. So anyway, if, if we square negative 6, we get 36. If we square a to the third, well, that law of exponents, where we have a to the third power squared, we multiply them. So that's a to the sixth over what? Well, y squared is being squared. So that's just y to the fourth. So now, here, this is the result after squaring our fraction. So we're almost done. 
Well, what do we do if we raise to the negative 1 power? So now we're going back to our fraction here, right? Let me just clear some of this off. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite the fraction again. We, we remember, got rid of that 1 half by mul essentially multiplying numerator and denominator by 2. That'll become a familiar algebra move as you get more experienced. Um, so here, we are now raising to the negative 1 power. Okay, well there's a definition uh, you might have come across. If you have x to the negative power, negative a, this is always going to equal 1 over x to the a. Now, essentially what's happening then is that you're flipping, right? You're flipping whatever you have. So this is actually going to become what? Well, following this pattern, x is now this entire fraction. We're raising it to the negative power, so it's going to equal 1 over this entire fraction, right? Negative 6 times a to the third over y squared. So we have 1 divided by, essentially divided by this whole fraction. And that might seem really intimidating, but remember, when you divide by a fraction, what do you do? Divide by a fraction? Well, you multiply by the reciprocal. So this is now going to equal, instead of 1 divided by this fraction, 1 times the reciprocal of this fraction, just like you would ordinarily do for dividing by fractions. Right? Just flip it around. Now when you multiply by 1, nothing changes, so this fraction is now your answer. It's y squared over negative 6 times a to the third. But look at that. This is interesting. You don't always need to do all these steps in here. Realize that if you're going to raise to the negative power, what happens? What happened between here and here? Well, everything flipped y squared is not in the denominator, it's in the numerator. Negative 6 to the, times a to the third is not in the numerator, it's in the denominator. So when we raise it to a negative 1 power, we just flip this entire fraction. And essentially the same thing will happen if we raise it to the negative 2 power. Um, we're going to flip it and then square every piece. Or you can square every piece and then flip it. Uh, but I'll show you those steps so you can see it in detail. Um, so again, here we're going to rewrite this. So we get negative 6 times a to the third over y squared. Now if I raise it to the negative 2 power, what does that mean? Well, it means 1 over this entire fraction, right? That looks nasty, but we can deal with this, squared. What does this mean? Well, let's, let's just remember that this means 1 divided by this fraction, but I'm going to expand it. I'm going to, I'm going to, excuse me, distribute, I guess, that exponent to each piece. So I get 1 over what? Well, we're going to square everything in this fraction. So negative 6 squared, that's 36. a to the third squared, just like before, a to the sixth. Remember, we kind of did that right here with this one. Although now we're working on the exponent of negative 2. Over here, y squared is being squared, so we get y to the fourth. So look at this. We have 1 divided by this whole fraction. When you divide by a fraction, you could solve by multiplying by the reciprocal. So 1 times y to the fourth, right? Fix that, y to the fourth over 36 a to the sixth. And again, multiplying by 1 will not change anything, so we can just write y to the fourth over 36 a to the sixth. And that's our answer. Now, you don't need to go through all these steps to remember that negative exponent flips the entire fraction. So here, you notice we just kind of flipped it around. Instead of y squared in the denominator to the numerator, instead of negative 6, 8 to the third in the numerator, it's now in the denominator. And everything is squared. So if you have something to the negative 2 power, just think, flip it around, and square every piece. All right, hope this helped.